Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial. In this video we'll be continuing on from a previous video where we've looked at how to import our animation into our target tracking object in Spark AR. And I'm basically going to show you how we can produce something to the effect of what you can see on screen now where we can have this animation uh, that plays. We can pause the animation, we could reset the animation and the animation only plays when we tell it to. So I'll show you how this is set up and hopefully this will be of some use to you people and there's various ways of how we can instigate this but I'm just going to show you how we can use this using uh, three simple planes for play, pause and reset. So let us begin. So here we have our looping fire animation that we sort of showed you how to uh, import and get into our project in part one of this uh, tutorial series. And what we're going to do now is be able to control when this fire starts and stops. So in order to do that, we're going to, in this case, create a series of planes, which will act as our buttons or controllers. These could be invisible. So we, for example, we could just create a plane on top of our fire that has a material which set to transparency of zero. That could be an invisible button. But for the purposes of illustration and making this clear to yourselves, I'm going to apply materials that have icons already on them. So you'll notice I've already imported a play, a pause and a reset icon. In this case, uh, I could have also added a stop, which could have been the same as the uh, pause slash reset. But all I wanted to do in this case was just have three buttons. And each of these bu um, textures that I've imported, I have assigned as a texture to a material. So you can see this is my pause material and this would be my play material. So to begin with, with my uh, target tracker and fire animated plane already in my scene from part, well, previous part, I'm just gonna simply click on my target tracker, right click and add a, another plane object. And again, I'm gonna bring this forwards into my scene and I'm gonna position this somewhere where I want my play command to be. So in this case I'm just going to drag up to this corner here. I'm going to adjust its scale down a little bit. Just to make this a bit more less intrusive so when we add the other buttons in it won't look quite as out of place. And I'm going to go to materials and I'm going to assign my play material that I have already previously created. If you want uh, help on how to create that, that is covered in other guides that we have within this playlist. Uh, but like I've just said, it was a material that was a PNG applied to material with alpha test turned on. Again, this was covered in previous videos. So with this plane uh, created, I'm going to now go over to my properties and where it says interactions patch, I'm just going to click create and I'm going to have it to create a object tap like so. So now whenever this plane is tapped I want it to perform a action. So in this case I want it to control our animation, our fire. So I'm going to go over to my assets, my animation sequence and I'm just going to click on this little uh, yellow uh, hour button next to current frame and that will pause our animation and just give us our link to our current frame state. So now we've got our animation paused, not doing anything. We won't want it to activate until we tell it to. We need to add in a series of patches. This is where it can get a little bit more complicated. So from our object tap, we're going to drag from our tap command into our gray and release. We're going to add a switch. And this switch will be our control of whether it turns on or off or starts or stops essentially. And I'm going to delete this connection because I don't want it to be a flip. I actually want the object tap to just go to turn on in this case. Because this is a looping animation, I'm going to go and drag this off from here and select a loop animation, like so. Again, even if it wasn't a looping animation, this method would work in order to be able to reset it and start from the beginning if we want it to. So don't worry if your animation isn't a loop and you just want to play once, this will work for that. So now with our loop animation in there, I'm going to drag away, uh, drag off from where it says progress. I'm adding a frame transition. 
So what this frame transition does is it transitions between each frames over the period of the duration of our control. So it's important uh, that we know how many frames we are within our animation. So I can tell this by looking down here. So for example, I have 37 frames. So I'm going to change where it says frames 4 to frames 37, because I want it to be the number of frames I'll have in my animation. So it plays all of them, essentially. And then I just simply link up my value to my animation sequence. So you should have something that looks like this. And now if I have simulate touch turned on my preview window and tap on this object, my animation should now just play and loop indefinitely. In order to make this pause, I can simply go to my uh, play plane and duplicate it, change the material to be my pause material, move this to be where I want my pause command to be, and with this pause uh, plane selected still, I can go to interactions patch, create object tap. and link this tap to turn off. So I have my object tap for, uh, for play linked to turn on, my object tap for pause connected to turn off. So now when I press the pause button, it will pause on whatever frame it currently is at during its playment. If I wanted to slow down my animation, I could adjust my uh, duration. So if I adjust this to 10, you'll now notice it's going a lot slower and a lot more stuttery. So I am going to keep this at 1 which will keep at the duration and frame rate of which it is set to when I imported it. If I want to reset this and start this from the beginning, again I can just duplicate my plane, put this somewhere in the middle for example and select my reset material. Again, patch, object tap, Oh, making sure I actually have the right plane selected when I do that, like so, so plane 3. And this time I'm going to link my object tap to reset on the loop animation. So if I press the uh, reset, it will return us to frame 1. So this would essentially act as a kind of semi-pause. Let me just double check that this is working correctly. So plane 3 is our reset button, which is connected to our loop animation, which is set to reset. OK, so let's just restart our animation and just check that this is working as I hope it would. Okay, so I've actually got these two the wrong way around. This is what I mean about it. it can get a little bit complicated. So in fact, I want my plane 2 to be linked to reset. And my actual reset to be linked to turn off. So my reset would link to the switch off. My pause would link to reset on the loop animation. So if I now press play, it's playing the animation. If I press pause, it pauses it on the frame it was at. If I press reset, it returns it to frame one. So if I was to play this and reset, it would just keep resetting it back to the first frame. So this is a very basic way of controlling our image sequence. Uh, we also you may notice I've got the option here for mirrors, so we can actually reverse our animation. So we can have it so it goes forwards and backwards. So we can have this kind of looping forwards, gets to the end, and then we return back to the first frame again. Uh, and this is just one way of controlling our image sequences within Spark AR using object tap, a series of planes, a switch and a frame transition controller that has the frames set to the number of frames within our image sequence. And as you can see, even though uh, I've done this multiple times, you can still be prone to error. So again, just make sure that you have something similar to what you can see on screen at the moment. And if you have any queries or questions, please comment down below. Thank you for watching.